The Fate of Iberia DLC for Crusader Kings 3 introduces the new Iberian Struggle, a system that simultaneously layers new mechanics and limitations into the game while breaking the existing rules all at the same time. In this video today, I want to quickly break down the multiple phases of the struggle, go through some of the nuance of how to increase your stages utilizing catalysts, talk about interactions within the phase of your struggle, and then close the video out talking about ending decisions. You can quickly navigate to each part of the video as divided by the chapters in the timeline and the description, but my overall goal is to give you a better understanding of the, this mechanic as well as walk you through how to maybe take advantage of certain stages or just clear up any confusion you might be having. If you haven't yet picked up the Fate of Iberia DLC pack, you can use the link to my Nexus store in the description and pinned comment. Nexus works directly with the developer to get you a Steam key and also gives me a cut of every sale that works significantly towards helping keep the channel alive as well as my brand new puppy fed. But let's get started here on my video on the guide for the new Iberian Struggle system. Loading into the game, let's talk about the Iberian Struggle. And we're gonna start off by pretty much going from the top of the menu and then going down. So we'll turn on the UI, we'll click this button, and we can see pretty much everything we need to know right here. It's for the most part a pretty self-explanatory and straightforward menu that really kind of breaks everything down for you. But there are some little things we're gonna go through here. And we're gonna start off talking about involvement. So we're gonna go view struggle involvement, and we can even hover over this and we can see who is involved. When a character or county is involved, it means they are considered a natural and integral part of a struggle by the people of a particular struggle region. The be they benefit fully from the fluid advantages of phases and are the primary activators of catalysts. So from this menu, we get everyone. So people that are involved, and of course, this is everyone right here, everyone that's involved. This little banner means they're involved, and then interlopers. Now, I don't have any interlopers in this current playthrough, but if we hover over this, we can see that when a character is tangled up in a specific struggle but not yet considered fully involved, they're an interloper. Interlopers have their capitals within the struggle region, or they're unlanded there, but do not have both an involved faith and an involved culture. So an example of this would be someone who goes on an adventure, any of maybe the northern characters, um, maybe Heston just up north in Brittany, who goes on an adventure and lands in this region. He's not a part of the faith. He's not a part of the culture. He does have his capital, though, in this region. That would be an interloper. Fully involved characters think of them as nosy, troublesome outlanders who don't understand where they're not wanted. Interloper rulers thus generally take some penalties in counties they hold inside of a struggle region. And we'll go into those things when we talk about the individual phases, but you'll find out that being an interloper can actually either work for or against you depending on the phase in which is active within the game. Now, involvement, for the most part, you should, if you're starting the game in one of these locations, you're going to be fine here, right? So, Mozarab, Catholicism, Muwadism, or Ashariism. And then you've got your cultures here that also break down all the cultures that are involved. Now, what's interesting is the first one, two, three, four, five, six cultures all currently exist. Branis exists, Maghrebi exists, Mashriki exists, and so does Bedouin, but it's not currently in the location. You might play some characters, though, that do have this. So, for example, this character right here, when the game starts out, he's actually Branis, but I converted him to Andalusian because I wanted to take advantage of, well, the nicer UI, but also mainly take advantage of the cultural benefits of being in a predominantly Andalusian location. But there are plenty of other characters that are, I don't, I don't even know if any of these are currently, any of them are, well, ah, so this guy, he is part of the involved struggle, but he does not hold a county because this county is still actually Andalusian. If you were to convert this culture, going back into this menu, into here, and into cultures, this Maghrebi, what he actually is, would be one counties in the Iberian struggle. So, these will come import, become important in the ending decisions portion, but for the most part, it's just kind of had a tally up, I guess you could say loosely like a cultural score of who's winning <laughs> the uh, struggle, but it's just nice to kind of see everything put into its respective places, and you can kind of find everything nice and easy. Let's move now into those phases to talk about the different phase effects. When you first jump into any of the Iberian characters, the Iberian struggle will kick off, and no matter if you start in 867 or in 1066, the current phase will be Opportunity. 
Now, this happens after conciliation more often than not, and it has one of two outcomes, either hostility, 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 or back to conciliation. And then conciliation and hostility will both go to the compromise phase in due time. The compromise phase will then bring you back into opportunity, and then you kind of hit that circle, rinse and repeat. So you have four phases that you'll cycle on depending upon the phase in which you're in. So you can see here for opportunity that after a long period of relatively peaceful coexistence during the conciliation phase, complacency begins to set in. And this is when the tipping point happens between either going to hostil hostility or back to conciliation. Then, like I said, conciliation would lead to compromise and then compromise either leads to opportunity and then opportunity will go into uh, hostility and conciliation again to get that circle. Just trying to create, reinforce that circle. Now, every single phase has four sets of effects that will govern war, culture, religion, or faith, and other effects. Other effects is kind of a catch-all of pretty much every rule that will be broken, changed, or unlocked in that phase. So we're going to go from left to right here. War effects basically are going to change the way that you do war. So fabricating claims will actually cost you prestige instead of gold. Wars within the struggle region cost less prestige, so they're a little bit easier to activate, but it also unlocks the border raid Cassus Belly. And border raids, we'll show those off in a little bit here, but basically it's a chance to grab some quick gold for yourself. And I'll show that off in the, if you want to jump into that portion, it's called the um, uh, struggle interactions. So that's where you can jump to, to find out more about that. But you also have contract assistance is a way to basically join in with another character that is at war with another character. So two nations are at war. You can offer to say, hey, I will join your war, but at the end of it, you have to give me money. And then bargain is basically you are... Um, this special interaction is available to involved rulers who are in a defensive war. The war leader asks a neighboring, higher-ranking ruler to join their war in exchange for becoming their vassal. So basically, rather than giving them money to join the war, you're going to uh, pay fealty to them. And also, mercenary hiring costs are reduced by 30%. Moving into culture effects, we get the converting to an involved culture. Remember, those are the cultures that are currently part of the struggle. Is less expensive. Learning a new language provides prestige. Granting a title to a local noble provides prestige. Increasing the development of a county with a different culture increases cultural acceptance, which is all very nice. And then we have faith effects. Um, I'm going to jump to the most important one on this list, and it's going to really change the way you play in your Iberian playthrough. Holy wars cannot be declared in the struggle region. This means that this is the struggle region, as you can see as outlined. Um, holy wars cannot be done here. So if you have, if you're Mozarab, if you're Catholic, or if you're uh, any of the two Islamic uh, cultures here, or I'm sorry, religions here, you can't just do a holy war to pave your way to victory, which is a very nice way to slow the game down. So if you were planning to do that, you can't do it yet. Converting to an involved faith is less expensive and convert faith in county proceeds faster with the struggle region. And then also interfaith marriages are available between involved characters. Then lastly, we get the big one, the thing that kind of the trump card that changes everything. So this unlocks the buy claim interaction, the demand payment interaction, abduct, 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 uh, fabricate hook, claim throne, foment revolt. That's a new special uh, one here that basically you pay gold and you cause for you cause public opinion issues in the designated county. The befriend scheme commission epic decisions for independent rulers as a chance to grant claims, which is really cool. You basically make an epic and it'll ask you, hey, do you want to actually get claims on your neighbors? It's a cool way to get that. And then involved characters can purchase truces, which is a new interaction as well, and unlocks the sell titles decision for kings and emperors. So all these other effects are pretty much things that were previously bound behind um, lifestyle choices, right? Fabricate a hook? Well, that's somewhere in intrigue. Claim throne? I think that's somewhere in diplomacy. Befriend, that's somewhere in diplomacy. So you have the ability now to get these things. Abduct is another one that was in intrigue. By claim, I believe, is in um this one, I'm, this one I'm, I'm at right now. Domain focus, lifestyle, uh, 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 stewardship, stewardship. <laughs> so this is a way to, like I said, kind of break the game. You have all these new tools to play with without being locked to a specific lifestyle choice. But it also means that if you choose a specific lifestyle choice, for example, intrigue, abducting and fabricating are going to be far more advantageous to you because they benefit more and the catalyst section will go into in a little bit.
But this will make it so that you know, hey, you can fabricate a hook easier on people if you're really jumping down that entry ladder. If you're not, you can still do it, maybe not, not as much success. And just a spoiler alert, use a hook on an involved ruler. So that's part of the catalyst system and allows you to get hooks a lot more, a lot quicker, and a lot more reliably. Now, into hostility is when things kind of boil over. Now, you have a chance to progress both of these phases according to the catalysts, and they will go up simultaneously. So, if one ruler does one catalyst for hostility and another one does conciliation, they'll both go up by their appropriate amounts. And it'll be kind of a race to see who gets to 1,000 first. And this will take a considerable amount of time. It's not going to be a quick process process so if you are on your second or third ruler and you're like man i'm still in the opportunity phase don't worry that is totally no normal now looking at the hostility phase you're going to find that this is going to change mainly the way that these things all interact there was an existing level of understanding between the factions and opportunity but with hostility things get well i mean hostile so with war things have changed. The struggle clash Cassus Belly, that's your new special CB with the DLC, is now cheaper. Involved in interloper characters, now this is where interlopers finally come back into the, the mix here, um, have shorter truces and wars, pay less piety, and pay less for wars against characters of a different faith. So you get a lot of craziness starting to come into this with involved in interloping characters. Unlocks the border raid, we had that in the previous opportunity phase. Unlocks the forced vassalization CB. So this is new. Well, it's not new to the DLC, but it's new in this phase. Same culture mercenary higher cost. So now if you see stuff like the Aragonese um, band or company, I think it's a bunch of light horsemen. That and your Aragonese, you will get a reduction of 30% to the cost of them, which is quite nice. Enemy fatal casualties plus 50%. Knight advantage plus 5%. Army Siege Weapon Effectiveness and Army Pursuit both increased by 20%. So you can see that the war effects of this are really going to be tilty. Also, with culture effects, promote culture proceeds slower now. Because, of course, the two, all the factions involved are fighting. Opinion of different culture, cultural fascination, and cultural acceptance gain all now get massive penalties. Because, like I said, this is the hostility phase, not any of the other ones. Faith effects now are going to be... Going to still be holy wars cannot be declared in the struggle region. Convert faith and county proceeds slower within the struggle region. And then effects for those involved enabled enables holy order creation for dukes. Interfaith marriages are available between involved characters. Marrying someone from a different faith now costs piety. Domain taxes of a different faith is increased by 25%. Holy order costs is reduced by 25% for um, Islam. I'm sorry, that's not for Islam. It's for whatever your faction, your your uh, holy order is. So that would be for all existing religions. Opinion of different faiths minus 10 and levy reinforcement rate of the same faith plus 50%. So if you have a vassal of the same faith, you'll get a better levy reinforcement. Now for other effects here, unlocks the claim liege title and then now the claim throne scheme for powerful vassals against involved rulers. So some stuff carries over, right? Involved characters can purchase truces from one another, that still's there, unlocks the study the art of scheming decision, max hostile schemes plus one, so things are really starting to ramp up and then development growth by reduces by 30%. So you see here that hostility gets tumultuous. Now hostility then eventually ends in a compromise phase where you get more benefits towards culture uh, probably the most towards culture and a lot of other benefits and effects like befriend and whatnot that kind of quell after an extreme period of hostility so that will be uh your your next phase after hostility but our alternative phase here is conciliation now conciliation you will find in war is gonna have way less advantages right so invasion and conquest cbs are unavailable so you cannot invade a kingdom. You cannot just do a conquest if you are a tribal ruler or a clan ruler. The struggle clash CB only targets one county, whereas prior it count it targets anyone who um, any counties that adjoin your border. It's a, it's a super strong CB. Effects for involved struggle clash CBs are ex now expensive because again conciliation unlocks the Iberian reclamation CB. The here you go. Let me, let me hover over that real quick. This is a special type of war available to involved rulers of the Iberian struggle. The attacker aims to conquer a duchy, which contains any involved counties held by an interloper or uninvolved ruler. So if the French start to kind of, are they're uninvolved and they kind of start moving in, they won't have a capital there, right? They'll be uninvolved. So I can try and reclaim that from them 
or vassalize them if they have they hold no land outside that duchy so it's a really cool way to basically keep everyone out that is not involved the purchase truce interaction now costs less gold involved and interloper characters have longer truces for wars within the struggle region and the control growth when at war is reduced as well as um per month and by a flat 10 percent so for culture, though, we get more bonuses. Hybridized culture is easier for involved in interloper characters. Releasing prisoners of a different culture provides prestige. And then you get a massive bonus for opinion of different cultures, personal scheme success chance, cultural fascination, cultural acceptance, and the learned language. Because learning language is crucial to your catalysts. Now with faith, you're getting a ton of stuff here with the sponsor Jewish scientist decision, the build pilgrim roads decision, evolved interloper characters have longer truces, um, convert faith in county is disabled for characters with involved faith, interfaith marriages are available, marrying someone from a different faith gives piety. So again, you see how this is all kind of matching in with the overall phase. And then lastly here with other effects, we still have befriend and befriend now has, ooh, oops, oops, oops. Befriend now has a staggering 50% bonus to its scheme power. And personal schemes are increased as well. So you can do more Befriend, Seduce, uh, Soulmate, uh, stuff like that. You can do a lot more of it. Again, all leading into your catalysts. Gifting gold to an involved character of different faith can lead to a friendship. Granting titles of a different faith can lead to friendship. So every time you're in a specific phase, you pretty much have to play by the rules of that phase. And the game limits what you can do in that phase, right? You know, you cannot do an invasion. You cannot do a conquest CB because you're in conciliation. So the game is going to basically pull the brakes on you or add the afterburners depending on the phase and depending on the play style you have in mind. And all of this kind of comes down to your catalysts and how to move these phases forward. The compromise phase is basically that, that kind of standing point, right? In between um, whether through sickness with the strife of the hostility phase or deft escalation during the consolation phase, the compromise phase represents a growing accommodation between the peoples of Iberia. Differences fall by the wayside and shared history and heritage binds former foes together. So this is pretty, pretty much the time in which everything is at kind of ultimate peace, more or less. And then it will eventually tip into the opportunity phase to restart the cycle. Now, let's talk about catalysts so let's move to the next section so catalysts are the big way in which you're going to move your faces forward right everything you're going to do is going to chip or add in some way to hostility or conciliation whatever phase you're in and whatever thing is going to tip forward and what you're going to see here is you can get a good breakdown of it by just simply going through this menu so breaking a truce with an involved ruler will increase the hostility by 25. someone's already done it hint it was me so if you break a truce, remember that's minus 50 to the public opinion that everyone has of you for three years and you lose a level of fame. But if you really want to start uh, tipping hostility forward, you can be breaking truces left and right. But you can also simply just reveal a secret of an involved ruler, become rival or nemesis with another ru ruler, a lot of really great ways. Now a big one here though is usurp a new title which is part of the Dure of Hispania. So if you take a look over here, this guy is my nemesis. And he has this this duchy title right here of this taifa. Um, that's a cool thing too. If if you have a liege, you're in an emirate. If you are independent, you're a taifa. For those that are fans of history like myself. So I'll press usurp here. And we're going to see that this says usurp title. And it's got a zero. I'm going to press it. And now, see all these little menus are starting to trip off. So, we usurped a new title. So that's 1x now for us. And it says your rival lost a title. Cool. But because that's also a catalyst, it's going to move hostility forward 3. And then also, because we uh, usurped it from him, it's going to move hostility forward an additional 10. So that's 13 total points moving forward with the catalyst. And you're going to find that this is going to happen a lot, right? It's not just going to be you. It's going to be everyone that's involved that will move this scale forward well, not backward, but just forward. So killing rulers, acquiring, acquiring a claim on a title. So this can be a really great way to just kind of push things forward. You can see it's been used 22 times. Converting a, a ruler or a county is used 11 times. Even constructing a building in a castle holding will increase hostility. Increasing a building in a city holding. Uh, is it not here? Yeah, right there will increase your conciliation. So basically you're gonna look at this list for whatever you want to really focus on 
phase wise are you going to be a, a militaristic character that really wants to push this forward and take advantage of a hostility phase and a tumultuous opportunistic phase then you're going to do a lot of these actions and it is why fabricating a hook is so important because use a hook on an involved ruler reveal a secret that right there you can get five points or ten points depending on which route you want to take so getting these hooks is so so crucial conversely looking at conciliation becoming best friends so befriending someone is a good step in the conciliation granting independence uh, grant one of your counties to a local noble of an involved culture so if you're playing andalusian and you appoint an andalusian noble well that counts so there you go so that's going to make another uh, step up here. Convert to the local culture or faith. I did this, so that added from 7 now to 8. Actually, I don't think I've done it. I've, I've done it. I just looked at the UI. It's done yet on this character. Ransom an involved ruler. So ransoming anyone will do this for you. Um, ruler, though. A baron is not a ruler. A count, a duke, a king, an emperor are considered rulers as far as the game is concerned for this one. Because I have... Ransomed quite a few uh, uh, barons, and this has not gone up once. <clears throat> Granting better contracts, inviting an involved ruler to a different faith, culture, or feast. Oh, of a different faith or culture to a feast does this. Again, the buildings. earning, Forming an alliance. So if you're down the diplomacy train, you go with alliance. That does it. Learning a language. I did this one right here. That's, my, that, that, that's me. Uh, become either friends or lovers with an involved ruler. So you have best friends and soulmates right here at 10, but you can just do simply a, a friend or lover for three. So this is why you get so much good stuff out of this. Or signing a truce outside of a war with another ruler. So that's why um, doing the interaction for truce is really huge here, here for conciliation. So let's now jump into the ending phase and then close the video out talking about some of these struggle interactions. One thing I forgot to mention before going into a discussion about ending decisions is if you just hover over any of these phases, like hostility here, you can see any of the latest catalyst progress. Also, it's the leading phase. Same thing here with conciliation. You can see any of those that have gone down and by who and where. You can even just hover over this and get the same amount of information. There you go. It's all right there just for you. You have it at your disposal. Um, now, let's click this and click View Ending Decisions. So you have got three different ones. Uh, this is Asturian Dominance, but it's pretty much whatever culture you are, Dominance. Or I think it's whatever whatever um, primary title you are. So we're uh, the King of Asturias, so we're Asturian Dominance. This ends the Iberian struggle, grants you a lot of renown, a nickname the Conquistador, unlocks the creation of the Empire of España, and then all house members get this. So struggle clash remains available. Convert faith is increased. Characters of the same faith and culture are also have an increased opinion. But of the other one, other the, the opposite faiths and culture have a reduced opinion. And one of the following modifiers you can choose for your house. house. So faith hostility. Some holy wars will be easier to wage. Cultural hostility. In addition, some conquest wars will be easier to wage. And then domination hostility. In addition, some holy war and conquest wars will be easier to wage. So it just depends on what you want to do for your dominance. You have to choose only one of these. Now, the other one here is status quo, which is kind of just, okay, things are, things are kind of, they'll kind of remain as is. Endless conflict over the peninsula only weakens us all. It is time to accept that Iberia was never meant to be united and instead be content with Asturias. So nicknamed the Pragmatic. Every independent or separated duchy in the Iberia region becomes a de jure kingdom, which is wild. Connected and completely controlled duchies transfer de jure to the primary kingdom of their top liege, and every de jure kingdom in the Iberian region with more than five counties becomes a de jure empire. The remaining kingdoms will fall under the de jure of a neighboring empire. The Empire of Hispania is permanently destroyed, and the holy war for duchy and conquer CBs against other involved culture faces has a 50% increase. Um... Your house gets a massive 10,000 renown bonus, and independent ruler's houses unlocks the enforced truce interaction, and house Cantabria gains compromise. This right here, and your independent ruler gains, capital counties gains regional stronghold. So you can see that this kind of empowers everyone, but makes it so no one can really easily come to the, to the top of the, uh, of the food chain. Then lastly uh, is Detente. Detent, I believe it's actually someone told me it's Detent. But... The wounds of the passengers will not be easily healed, but we must try up the peninsulas to find a lasting peace. So, 
you become the equitable. All involved cultures gain 50% cultural uh, acceptance, permanently allow interfaith marriage, and permanently disable offensive holy wars against all involved cultures. Also permanently allows involved culture and faith rulers to join each other's defensive wars. Massive renown bonus and then conciliation. So these are your endings for the struggle and you have to simply just meet these requirements. You know, I say, sim I say simply. So the tent, the tente, requires you to be in the conciliation phase and then have everything else here. The status quo uh, requires you to be in the compromise phase and then quite a bit of things here. And then the dominance one is probably the mo most demanding one, but this is the hostility phase. And then it's going to require a massive amount of uh, land, right? So completely control all these locations. I think it is, where am I? Involvement. No, no, no. I want the kingdom titles. So we need, oh, these are all the duchies. My bad. Sorry about that, guys. Here's your duchy title. So we need this and this and this and this. And that will enable us to have dominance. So it's a lot, it, depending on your play style, one of these is going to really fall into what you have in mind for your conquest of Iberia, or maybe even not your conquest, the way you want to kind of smooth things over. So this gives you an idea of how these ending decisions will then color your playthrough and, you, and your objectives for your Fates of Iberia playthrough. So to close our video out here, we're going to talk about a lot of the fun interactions that you can do in the game with the new DLC. Now, stuff like Befriend, um, Fabricate Hook, those are things that you all know that, that you've probably played through before, right? We'll right-click here and we can see that stuff like that. We've already been able to do that. But let's go ahead and maybe click on this location. And let's take a look at what we could do. So going from the top down, we have some fun stuff. Purchase Truce. Tr <laughs> Purchase Truce. Purchase, it's not like I had like a Sean Connery accent. Purchase Truce money penny. So you click on this. And it'll essentially allow for a 15-year truce outside of war. Remember, that's some crucial for the conciliations catalysts. So you get a truce with each of the uh, uh, with each other for 15 years, and you can do a small sum, a medium sum, or a large sum. And you're paying this to the specific character to try to get this truce online. Of course, they could decline it, and it stresses you out. Uh, no, no one wants to be stressed out. So this is a really great way to solidify truces, especially if you look at, you know what? I don't want to go tussle with this guy. We're, we're, I, he's not in my plans of conquest, and I really don't want him to join in on an ally's war. And that's a cool thing too, right? It's like, you know what? Maybe I want to actually go for this. We will purchase a truce, and well, obviously he hates me right now, so that's got to be a bit of an issue. Um, but... We can purchase a truce, and this will kind of segue his involvement in anything against me or maybe with some of the allies he has in mind. But also keep in mind, these things do have this struggle agenda. So if the things that you already have or the things that are kind of near you and it kind of makes sense for your character to want to take, but it's also near another character, let's take, for example, this location right here. That's in between our two lands, and maybe this character wants that. So struggle agenda will be a native net negative 50 against me. So you have to kind of always kind of contest with that agenda of the AI, which is kind of fun. It makes it so you can't just simply, oh, I'll, I'll cheat my way through this using court politics or whatever. Now, looking back at this character, we also have invite to activity. And this allows us to either call a hunt or host a feast. Um, I already called a hunt recently, so I unfortunately can't do that. You know what? No one wants to go on a hunt with me anymore. So here we go. So I can host a feast. This character will come specifically to this feast, and this can help out with conciliation by inviting people of other faiths and cultures, things that will help tip that forward with the catalysts. And this is also a really great way if, you know, I really want to just offer vassalage to this character, and they're right at a tipping point. I've given them money. I've done all these things. Well, invite them on a feast or a hunt. And now they'll increase their their uh, relationship. So that's a really great way to uh, to to kind of get those to get things kind of tipped forward. Now you cannot do that though with well let me see over here. You cannot do it with your vassals. So if you wanted to specifically get them to go on a a feast or hunt with you, you cannot do it. Now another big one is 
challenge to board game. Now this is part of the new cultural change to tabletop warriors that the Andalusians have by default. May challenge the other characters to a board game, specifically chess, and may wager a personally held county in board games if both players have this rule. So if I look over here at this character, sorry, this character, Oh, I already recently did this. Okay, well, sorry. But yeah, you can challenge them to a board game of chess, and it will be between, it'll basically be roles between intrigue, learning, and martial. So you have that new interaction as part of a, a, a change to the Andalusian culture in this DLC. Now, another big one, though, and one of the newer ones, is Foment Re Revolt. So I can click this button and pay money, small, medium, or large, to essentially cause a negative hit to the popular opinion and try to cause a revolt in that character's nation. And that's a huge way to weaken them, destabilize them for maybe a big invasion, whatever it is, because you do this to really do a one-two punch into them. Maybe Asturias is just way too big and I'm not going to be able to take it on my own. I can try and foment a revolt there um, and tip it over into my... Into my uh, into, into the tip the scales for myself. Now, another big one too is the contract assistance. And this will happen when you are at war. The AI will offer these to you nonstop, but you can also do the same. So, okay, I can't do that one. Let's go ahead and see who else is at war around here. This guy seems to be doing a little ditty. So we'll do contract assistance. So basically what it says here, if your war contribution is at least 100 when the war ends, that character pays you 100 gold. So this is a great way to get money to help fabricate hooks, to get enough um, religion, or I'm sorry, piety or fame to change your culture or religion to help tip things forward with conciliation or maybe with hostility, whatever it is. But this is also, like I said, a good way to just get some gold. You can join in on some of the, the factions around you, help to shore up maybe a faction that you don't want to get weakened and help join in on their fights when you normally wouldn't be able to do so. So this is a really cool way to kind of jump into that. And like I said, the AI will bombard you with these the second you go to war. Now, there is also this. We're going to declare war here, and we've got some new CBs. We have your claims, we have conquering, we have invading, all that kind of typical standard stuff. But we also have struggle clash. If we take a look at this, this is not uncommon for rulers, blah, blah, blah. The ready, uh, the ready availability of niche local disputes allows rulers to conduct small-scale land grabs, conquering or vassalizing their targets. Since clashes depend on the environment of their struggle, their prestige costs scales with the current struggle phase. So in opportunity, it's okay. In hostility, it's cheaper. In conciliation, it's expensive. So it just depends on what's going on around you. And in this case, I'm taking anything that is adjoining my border, which is this right here. If I were to click over here onto Asturias, and we did a struggle clash, these are the counties that are adjoining my border. So I will naturally go and fight them and take them. This is not part of Asturias, so it would not be a part of the uh, struggle clash here. So this is... What has kind of essentially replaced Holy Wars in that you do have a very projected and very pointed expansion of your realm, but you can't just simply leapfrog and keep going and keep going and keep going. You're going to have that truth. It's going to slow you down. Makes sense, but it's a cool way to just expand outward as much as you can. But you also, too, have Reclaim Relics of War, which I believe is um, not linked to the DLC. I think it is um, linked to a free patch with the DLC, so just to kind of a heads up on that, but you become the owner of the Bells of Santiago, and uh, he'll have a claim on those bells. And it is also worth noting for the Struggle Clash, you take over that land entirely. They, be, they become your, your uh, vassal as if it was a normal um, war on a claim. Now, you also have a border raid. Now, this is how you can get a lot of money quick. No titles change, you don't gain any land, nothing will change with the owner of that territory. But, they will lose control. Can I move this over here? No, I cannot. They will lose control. They'll lose development. And then they have a chance of a random building being destroyed and thus earning you extra gold. You'll get a flat amount of gold for completing the, the border raid. And then you get the gold for completing the siege on that location. So for example here, uh, let's look at Avila because my one of my best friend's name is John Avila. That is a loot of 16. So if I were to... Declare war, do the border raid on Abila. And that, 
would give me 16 plus stat 20. So 36 gold would be gotten. And then I would get fame from this. In addition, if I did break down a building, I would also earn extra gold here. So these border raids are, again, more ways to solidify income so you can fabricate hooks and do all of that fun kind of jazz. So these are a lot of the cool new interactions with the game. And I think that they are a massive change to the way that you will interact when you are playing through fates of iberia so if you have any questions about this about the uh, struggle and you're and you are well struggling with the struggle mechanic go ahead and let me know in the comment section below there is a lot of nuance and we didn't go into the compromise or conciliation or hostility <sighs> i can't say hostility at all today hostility phases because i want you to discover them for your own you're going to find that the game will play the same for each phase. You'll just be limited on what you can and cannot do with certain interactions. But I really think that this is going to be a lot of fun for people to dive in on. And if you have any questions, maybe even have a good volunteer for a new mouth of mine because I fucking suck at speaking today. Go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Don't forget to check out the live streams of the playthrough that we'll be doing of an Al-Andalusian character. You can find that live on the channel on Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, 10 a.m., 10 a.m., and 11 a.m., respectively, Pacific Standard Time. I'll be doing a giveaway of the DLC that you can come and hopefully win one for yourself, or at least just get an idea of how Fates of Iberia plays out. But as always, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one, and take care.